Alright, so it's the first weekend of May here in New Zealand, that means only one thing, and that's that it's the opening morning of duck shooting weekend. Um, I'm not out duck shooting because in the investment community, the first weekend of May also only means one thing, and that is that it's the Berkshire Hathaway annual shareholders meeting. So Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger host sort of an annual event each year for their shareholders. Um, over a big weekend, it turns into sort of a, a half shareholder meeting half just big expo of, of all the Berkshire Hathaway companies and there's always some really interesting um, questions and discussions that come out of it. So one of the things that Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger are famous for at, at these investment meetings is actually spending a very small amount of time talking about the actual business of Berkshire Hathaway. So um, it's, a, it's a laughably short period of time where they actually talk about formal business right at the start of the meeting. And what they actually do is for the rest of the session, they basically just open it up, um, open the floor up for questions. So um, if shareholders have questions that they really wanna ask Warren Buffett or Charlie Munger directly, they can go ahead and do that. Um, there's always some very interesting discussions that, that sort of come out of, out of it. So one of the things that really caught my attention and one of the things that Buffett has said a couple of times over the last couple of days is around um, how he's really valuing having a lot of cash at the moment. Um, and he said a couple of semi sort of scary things about uh, where he sort of thinks we are in the economic cycle. So um, Warren Buffett is famous for not being a sort of stock market timer. He's very much against trying to time the market and predict when a crash is gonna happen. Um, but he said a couple of things that are quite interesting over the weekend. So um, the response I'm about to go through um, came actually from a question around Buffett's cash pile. So if you're unaware, um, Berkshire Hathaway, which is BRK.A, um, and .B is the ticker symbol for that. So they have a couple of different classes of shares, a topic for another video. Um, Berkshire Hathaway currently have around a hundred, one hundred and eleven um, billion dollars in cash. It's far more cash than the company has ever held. Um, if you look at the market cap of Berkshire Hathaway, um, it's a little over five hundred billion. So essentially the market is valuing the Berkshire Hathaway businesses. If you take a um, hundred and eleven off that five hundred or so, um, at sort of the high 300s, um, high 300 billion range for the actual businesses that Birch Hathaway owns. And then I've got all of this excess capital and cash, which is sitting there um, in the form of the 111 billion in cash and, and short term investments like short term government bonds and those sorts of things. Um, but essentially, what I'm trying to say is about over 20% of the market sort of value of Berkshire Hathaway is currently just in cash, which is very, very interesting for a guy that, um, and, and Warren Buffett, that is very much against having cash over the long term. Um, businesses are, are by far going to outperform cash um, as an investment. Cash uh, gets eaten up by inflation and those sorts of things. You can't earn a very high return on it, so he much prefers to own businesses as opposed to holding a lot of cash at any point in time. Um, cash does offer security, and he's always said that he likes to keep around $20 billion in cash um, just in case they need it for some of some sort of short-term big event. Um, they own a lot of insurance companies and, and do a lot of insurance work in what they call the super catastrophe business, so um, insuring against things like hurricanes and flooding and tsunamis and all those sorts of terrible events, um, those can obviously come out of nowhere. So they have to have a good amount of cash to be able to pay out a lot of those big claims that come up in sort of natural disasters and super catastrophes. So they like to have some amount of cash, but they certainly don't like to be sitting on 111 billion. Um, and a cash, uh, a, a question rather that came from the audience today was, um, you know, Warren Buffett is a big proponent of index investing. So buying into things like an S&P 500 fund that are just going to track the market over time, um, not necessarily picking individual companies if you're not familiar and not sort of educated in that area. Um, he much prefers people to go out and buy the S&P 500 index, um, bet on America essentially, and just hold it over the long term. So one of, the, one of the questions that came in was around that specific strategy that Buffett um, often outlines. 
And he said, well, it looks like, Warren, you're not necessarily practicing what you preach. You're telling people to invest in an S&P 500 index, but you're sitting on all this cash. Um, and if you had actually gone and invested that cash in an S&P 500 index yourself, you would probably have um, this 111 billion or so looking more like about 150 billion. Um, because obviously the S and P five hundred has been in a big bull run. Um, it's gone. It's gone up and up and up for about a decade now, and that value, the value of the cash going into that index all the time, would be worth a whole lot more than it is today. Um, so, you know, what's going on? What, why is Warren Buffett not investing in an S and P five hundred like he like he advises many other people to do? Um, and his response was quite interesting. So let me just clear the board, and then we'll dive into that. So Buffett responded to that question with a couple of uh, really interesting points, I thought. So the first thing he brought up was just around um, security. So like I said, um, Buffett likes to sit on a lot of cash just in case things come up. Um, they like to have cash to um, give themselves some security in terms of if super catastrophes do happen and they have to pay out um, those big insurance claims. But they also like to have um, cash sitting there for opportunities. So... Um, when opportunities come up, um, when there's a lot of fear in the market, just like we saw um, in the last recession in 2007, 2008, they like to have a lot of cash there to take advantage of that. And that's actually the big sort of main point he brought up here. So his, his second point was, you know, in 2007, 2008, they were also sitting on a lot of cash. Nowhere near 111 billion. They were a, they were a lot smaller company at that time, um, but they had a hell of a lot of cash. They'd been stacking it up for a few years at that point. Um, and this is something that Buffett's actually done repeatedly over many, many business cycles. He did this in the very early 2000s during the tech bubble, where many, many companies were massively overvalued. He was starting to sell any positions that he felt... Um, he could sell, he's, like I said in, in some previous videos, videos, he's not a big seller of stocks anymore. So he was mainly doing a lot of holding of those positions and just stacking up the cash that his operating businesses were giving him and stacking up the cash that the dividends coming off his um, equity portfolios were giving him as well. So he said, um, you know, hindsight's a, a great thing. And if we look back on the previous 10 years, then uh, yes, you know, it's obvious I, I should have invested in the S&P 500. Um, and possibly as a small investor, that's a good thing to do. But there's some practical things that stop him from doing that. So when you're trying to deploy $100 billion um, plus into an index fund, uh, there's some practical things that make that very difficult. Uh, that's massive buying pressure on sort of the whole market. So it's not something he necessarily wants to do. It would take him quite a bit of time to get into it. And, you know, one of the key things he would want to do if he did go down that track and invest in, a, in an index fund is he'd want to be able to get out of that index fund very quickly if better opportunities came up to buy individual companies. Um, and that's basically just something he can't do with the size of Berkshire Hathaway. So that's the first thing. Um, and as you remember in 2007, 2008, we were at sort of peak um, stock market levels before the Great Recession. We had massive drops. So um, there were many stocks on average, I think we were down right around 50%. Um, across the entire market at kind of the bottom, um, peak pessimism, as Buffett likes to call it. Um, and, you know, what he was saying is, is these things are bound to happen again. Every now and again, it rains gold. So the, the figures he actually said were in the next 25 to 30 years, uh, in the next 25 to 30 years, it's going to rain gold probably two to three times. Um, and when it rains gold, I'm sure you've heard me say this before and you've heard Buffett say this before, when it rains gold, you don't want to go out with a thimble, you want to go out with a wash tub. You want to be able to capture as much of that gold falling from the sky as you possibly can. And the only way that you can do that um, is with a lot of cash. So when bargain basement prices come up, you've got to have a lot of cash to take advantage of those opportunities. So um, that's what Buffett's saying here. Um, he likes to have a lot of cash for when those opportunities come up. 
and he's starting to hint a lot at, at you know we could be on the brink of something pretty soon so he's hoarding more cash than ever he's just made a 10 billion dollar deal um, but in the grand scheme of you know this sort of cash pile 10 billion is not a massive amount <laughs> he's still got a ridiculous amount of cash sitting there um, and he's ready and, and kind of camped out for for when this opportunity comes along so um, let me clear the board again and we'll get into a couple of last things so the final thing I want to talk about that Buffett's brought up this this, um, this last weekend is an interview he actually, he actually did with Becky Quick the night before the um, before the Berkshire Hathaway annual meeting. So something that Becky Quick asked him or something that Buffett actually brought up was around the current economic conditions. So if you're unfamiliar with some of the the fundamental economic conditions that we're in at the moment, particularly in the United States, I'll quickly run you through them. So we're currently at very low unemployment. Unemployment. Uh, currently very low inflation. And we're currently at very low interest rates. Um, and, he, and Buffett said, you know, there's no economic textbook that could have predicted something like this was ever going to happen. Uh, he also mentioned that it's probably not, or at least hinted, that it's probably not all that sustainable. And Buffett's typically the last guy you will ever hear say something pessimistic about the US economy. He's very pro-US. He's very bullish on the United States for the long term. He thinks it's going to continue to do very, very well. So to hear him be a bit more pessimistic about you know, the unsustainability of the current uh, landscape in the US was very, very interesting. So um, that's what I've taken away from, from this Berkshire Hathaway weekend. Um, I've, I'm going to continue to watch uh, the rest of the, the Q&As that, come, come, uh, that have come through this weekend. I haven't watched them all yet. So um, there's some interesting things that I've found so far, but definitely we'll be uh, looking at some of those a bit further. So um, let me know if, what you guys think in the comments below. Um, are you guys camped out in a bit of cash as well? Um, if you've got $111 billion in cash, let me know. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, if you could send some of that my way, I'd be very, very grateful. Um, yeah, interesting stuff from Buffett nonetheless. Um, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit subscribe over here. I think I've figured out that it's right around this area somewhere. So hit subscribe over there. Um, there's some other videos you can watch over that way. And that's all for me today. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Cheers.